All right, everyone. This space is about to start. Please do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right, everyone, we're ready. So let's start now. Yeah, hello, Polkadot community. It's me again, Anna from Polkadot Insider. And today we're just so proud to have an AMA session with Polymake, a decentralized community-driven funding protocol developed on Polkadot to accelerate the Web3 ecosystem. The open source and module-based blockchain system facilitates fundraising in a regulatory compliant and sustainable manner using on-chain credentials. And in case you don't know, Polkadot Insider is a channel of data news, data analytics, real-time data, and project research to support retail investors' views when they invest in the Polkadot and Kisuma ecosystem. Well, so as you can see, many early stage projects need more efficient, decentralized, and regulatory compliant fundraising options. Otherwise, they have to resort to intermediaries or centralized platforms, which come with costly and time-consuming funding processes and restricted investor base. 
This is also the reason for our AMA session today. We talk about the importance of decentralized community-driven crowdfunding to flourish an ecosystem. So that's why it's a great honor for us to have one of the core team members of Polymake, who's going to share with us about Polymake and also what they are doing to this. So no more waiting, guys. Let's start. Yeah. So to kickstart the atmosphere. Sir, can you tell us something about Polymake and also what is your background and how you became involved in Polymake and also Polkadot ecosystem? Yes. Um, hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to to be here um, and uh, and talk directly to the community. It's always great to get the, um, to interact directly with the community. Um, so, a bit about. Uh, Myself, my background. So, I started out as uh, CFO for Web3 Foundation, so the foundation behind Polkadot, and I started out there in 2019. So, I've been with uh, with Web3 Foundation for um, for some years, and then out of that came uh, the idea of uh, of Polymac, both on the uh, on the learnings of what we actually did in. Um, in the uh, in the Web3 Foundation, but also the the work I did together with uh, Kill Cross Call for uh, for a couple of years. So the original idea about Polymac actually came out from from Kill Cross Call to figure out how do you actually launch a project on Polkadot, where you can't just uh, issue a token before you actually have a parachain. So I started working uh, working with uh, with a few friends of mine uh, a couple of years back of saying how can we actually make this into uh, a fully fledged project? How can we actually help the community around Polkadot? Not only in how to actually safely launch a project and and issue your tokens, but also how can you actually get uh, access to fundraising and get access to fundraising in a way that you don't necessarily have to know a lot of. Um, a lot of investors, a lot of VCs, but that you can do it in a much more blockchain native uh, way of having direct access through the um, through the blockchain um, ecosystem, having it completely decentralized and trustless. Yeah, thank you so much, sir, and for your very interesting story and also something about Polymic and. It is the beginning, but I can already see a lot of convenience and a lot of benefits that Polymic bring to the ecosystem and bring to the users. Yeah, that's very good to know. So, um, and now we're ready to hear more. Yeah. So, could you please explain a little bit more about the funding process of Polymic, and also how can you guys control the risk and regulatory issues when the the process operated automatically without the human intervention? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think it's one of the core ideas of Polymic and one of the core things that you can actually build on Polkadot. This is one of the reasons why we're actually building on Polkadot that we actually have the technology to build something that's completely decentralized and very much integrated into the blockchain community. So, the funding process on Polymic actually starts out with the pro- with the projects wanting to go in and raise funds. Anyone with a project can utilize Polymic to raise funds. The only thing you need is that you need what we call an issuer certificate. That issuer certificate is essentially the KYC of the project that wants to raise funds, so that there is a record of the team behind the the project that wants to raise the funds uh, that they're requesting through the uh, through the community. So with that issuer certificate, anyone can go on Polymic, do a request to raise funds, and at that point, the community actually comes in to uh, to play and plays a big role in figuring out what projects can actually go all the way through to the fundraising process on Polymic. So after the initial initiation of the fundraising process, every process will go through an evaluation phase. And this is where we have the evaluators, and evaluators are members of the community that has specialized knowledge in any uh, place where you can 
utilize that specialized knowledge to do due diligence on the projects uh, raising funds. So it could be someone that's very into the tech behind the project. They can potentially go through code that might already be in the in the uh, in in GitHub, or it could be someone that's more into the uh, investment side or the uh, financing side of the project and can do a due diligence on the, on that basis. The core here is that everybody will have access to the same information. So every project that raises funds will upload documentation to an on-chain database where everybody has access to 100% the same information and can do the diligence on that basis. Every project will need to reach a certain amount of support from the evaluator base on Polymac to be able to go to the fundraising round. So once that evaluator support has been created, the project will move on to the fundraising round. In the fundraising round, there is basically two rounds. So the first round is what we call the auction round or the price discovery round, where we figure out what should be the fair price for the project. Here, it will be mainly institutionals, VCs or high net worth individuals that will participate. These will all have full KYC AML via our integration with the, with the Kill protocol utilizing verifiable credentials so we can identify the participants. So these participants that are, you can call them the professional actors on, uh, on the blockchain ecosystem, they can go in and participate in an on-chain auction of how big tickets they want to uh, participate with and also on what price they think is, uh, is viable for them. So that the auction round runs for a total of five days and determining what should be the full price of the, uh, of the project raising funds. And once that auction round has been completed, the project will go into what we call the community round. And here it's very important to say that anyone with a credential, and that will be both on the institutional side, but definitely and more importantly on the community side, that everybody can get a KYC AML issued as a credential that they can show on chain and they can participate on the similar terms as the institutionals and the VCs. So on the from the auction round, Polymac will calculate a weighted average price of the, uh, of the participants at the auction round and that weighted average price is the price that the community can also buy in at uh, for, for the project. So as such, we are combining the power of getting the professional actors from VCs and institutionals into the projects and investing. And then you get the community that are able to participate as well and get an early uh, interest in the project that they, uh, that they want to support. And when you look at the regulatory risks and the, uh, and the regulatory issues, then one of the things is the KYC AML. We can do that completely trustlessly via the via verifiable credentials. And the KYC AML is performed by a third party. So not the projects, nor Polymac knows who actually is engaging, but everybody can trust that the trusted first party that is issuing the KYC AML certificates know the exact uh, user. So you can interact on chain synonymously, but still regulatory compliant. Well, oh, that's amazing, sir. Yeah, so thanks to you that we get to know more about how decentralization work and the funding process, and also a lot of uh, processes that Polymic offer uh, to like to secure a safe and stable and regulatory compliant journey for the users for a community. Yeah, and it's very helpful for us to know. So for our next question, we want to talk about the community. So how does the role of the community work during the funding process? So for us, community is center stage. This is the core of, of Polymac. The community are the gatekeepers of a fully decentralized protocol. So Polymac is, as we see it, software that anyone can use to raise funds. The problem with software, and especially decentralized open source software, 
is making sure that it's also used for the right purpose and that no one is sort of trying to circumvent the system. And that's where it comes where, where it comes into uh, uh, talking about devaluators. So we talked a bit about evaluators before as being the ones that are doing a decentralized due diligence on the projects. So these are purely community members. Anyone with an interest have a possibility to act as an evaluator on Polymake. What you need to be an evaluator is that you need Polymake tokens that you put at stake. So you do your evaluation, you put your Polymake tokens at stake, if you do a right evaluation and the project is successfully funded, then you get rewarded in the project token that you evaluated. If you get it wrong, the Polymake protocol will slash a part of your stake tokens to make sure that the incentives are aligned. So you can't just have community members that are saying, hey, this is the greatest project ever, let's all uh, participate in it. But you need to put something at stake of saying that you actually made a fully open, transparent, informed um, decision about if this is a good project or not. So the evaluators are core here to make sure that on Polymake we end up having really high quality projects that want to do fundraising. If you get projects in that have questionable motives or let's say it could be a scam project, that the evaluators here are core to go in and not going in and, and put their Polymic tokens at stake to be able to be evaluators because if they cannot see that this project is going to succeed, you shouldn't bet on the fact that this is going to be a successful fundraise. So, so that's why for us, the community is actually core to, uh, to ensure that we get the highest quality projects on Polymic. Yeah, we really understand your point that community play a very big role in Polymic and it's the core of your project and also there are a lot of like uh, a lot of things that community can do and also Polymic is doing great job to serve the community and that we, we all really appreciate all of that yeah so um, for our next question in your opinion what are some core advantages a peer-to-peer -peer community based fundraising platform can do better than a centralized one hmm, yeah that's a that's a really good question and i think it's it's one of the really core natives of why blockchain actually exists there is a lot of centralized projects we have seen central like centralization has been working for for centuries the good thing about centralization is that it's usually the easiest way to move forward uh, because you only have a very small number of actors uh, taking decisions. The, that, but that's also the problem. Like a centralized committee only takes decisions based on what knowledge they have or what incentives that they have. And that is usually not very transparent. So anyone else are not necessarily uh, able to trust that centralized committee's decision. So as such, you get something that actually works really fast, but is not transparent. And you need to act on that on a trustless basis or trust-based basis. So what you can do with uh, with Polymec and, and blockchain in general is that you can have a peer-to-peer -peer based uh, community where you come together and you form opinions based on full transparency and on uh, on f a full trustless basis. So you don't have to go in and in the case of Polymic, making your decisions on what is a good or a bad project based on uh, I trust this person or that person, but you can make up your own mind based on the full transparency and information that you can actually see online. So nothing is hidden behind trust walls that you see in the uh, in, in centralized uh, setup today. Uh, a good example of that is also when you look at regulation. We talk a lot about uh, Polymic being regulatory compliant. One of the real issues with regulation is that regulation is actually in place to 
mitigate these issues about the lack of transparency. So in a lot of centralized setups and uh, and financial institutions today, you end up that it's not transparent. You cannot see what happens to every uh, to every transaction in that uh, in that setup. That you can with uh, with a fully decentralized blockchain. You have full transparency. There is no information asymmetry, so no one knows more than anyone else because all the information is in the same place and accessible to everybody. Hence, you have a full uh, overview of everything, and on that you actually enable a lot of these issues that that is trying to be solved by by regulation by basically just giving everybody access to the same information all the time. Yeah, and I really agree with you about this one. Although we cannot deny what good things that centralized platform had done to the uh, to the ecosystem, but as you said, the problems there, like lack of transparency. And that's why the decentralization comes in to improve all the, the problems. And we, are, we can all see that decentralization is, is the future for, for reasons. Yeah, and Polymake is, is, is doing about it. And then also a lot of projects is doing about it. And that's like a good news for users, for a community. And we really appreciate all of your hard work for this journey. Yeah, so um, the next question is about a little bit of the future. Yeah, so what are your upcoming plans in 2023 for Polymake to grow more and strongly in the future? So I would say that the first plan for, for 2023 for, for Polymake is launch, launch and launch. Uh, this is for us uh, really um, the, the pivotal year of coming out of, uh, of, uh, of stealth phase in the late uh, 2022 and now actually being able to uh, to launch Polymake later on in 2023. Uh, so for us that's that's obviously the biggest plan for uh, for, for the uh, for the rest of the year but of course that also that also means a lot of other stuff than just talking about the uh, the, the technology and the chain. So we want to launch, we want to make sure that Polymic is out there, that everybody can start using Polymic. But of course, that also means using a lot of time interacting with the community. Uh, it's really important for us that we can go out, tell the story about Polymic, tell how Polymic can be used so that anyone can figure out of like, if they're in the situation that they have a good idea and they need funding for it, how would they actually go about doing that? So we want to be a part of as many of, uh, of meetups, uh, events and so on going on in the Polkadot ecosystem to go out there and interact with the community, help the founders that are looking at saying, how can I actually launch my project? How can I make sure that I get enough funding for, for, uh, for my project? And not using all my time on going around talking to VCs and uh, uh, and other institutionals, but that I can actually do a very efficient process on Polymic, getting my fundraise done in as little as 45 days, and then I can get on and I can use time on actually developing and building the project that I'm uh, that I'm building. So, so for us, it's really much being there as a resource for the, for the community being able to to help them make the time to funding a lot shorter and make the process a lot more uh, uh, painless uh, compared to compared to what it is today so uh, you should definitely expect us to uh, to be at a lot of the uh, events and, and meetups uh, in the in the in the rest of, of 2023 and uh, and beyond um, I think some of the, some of the places that we're going to be uh, so far is that uh, there will be uh, the Polkadot uh, India uh, event at the beginning of April, so so we're going to be going to be present there, and also looking at uh, and being present at uh, at many of the Polkadot events uh, on in the rest of 2023. And on top of that, we're also planning on doing several uh, events also out of Switzerland, where where we're based, to make sure that we can actually build up and be very open to the community, and that the community 
can always come and ask us of how we can help them in, uh, in their fundraising uh, and launch journey. Yeah, thank you, Sarah, a lot. Yeah, launch, launch, and launch. Oh, we're going to take it at a promise and definitely wait for all the polymic next steps. Yeah, and also, we really appreciate about all your hard work and uh, simplifying the funding process for users and like very strengthen um, all the users' journey in this one. And that's, that's really amazing. So, um, yeah, you, you also talked about the Polkadot India event. Yeah, we, we, we really can't wait for it as well. Yeah. So, um, coming to the last question, which is quite relaxing. So, if you have to say two words or just two sentences to express your pride in Polymake, so what are those, sir? So, I think I'll take it a bit back to what is core for Polymake which is very much like decentralization, transparency, and being able to actually give everybody fair access to participate in projects. Um, participating in projects, and this was, one of the, this was one of the reasons why I ended up uh, funding uh, or founding uh, Polymac together with my, my co-founders was we all saw the difficulties in starting our projects, how to how to raise funds, how to issue tokens, all these all these kinds of very very necessary steps, but also steps that actually takes a lot of focus away from, um, especially the technical founders. One of, one of the problems in doing the fundraise is that today there is not equal access. It very much depends on who you know, or do you know someone who knows someone that can help you? Um, so as such, it becomes very transparent and very dependent on uh, on, on a close set of, uh, of persons. So that's why we're looking at, okay, so the core for blockchain is decentralization, transparency and trustlessness. How can we actually take that and put it on the, uh, the funding uh, cycle all the way from pre-seed over seeds, Series A, and also to to the actual launch of the projects. And here, I think uh, Polymer can be key in providing that much more transparency, and especially sort of reducing the amount of information asymmetry that there is in these uh, in the fundraising process of, uh, of of projects, and make sure that anyone in the community can actually participate in all these projects. Because as such, everybody is interested in making sure that there is a huge community around the project. So as such, we see Polymec delivering a very nice package for everybody involved. Both the project raising funds, the VCs and the institutionals that want to go out and actually participate in project, and as well in the community that wants to participate in projects early on. Because of all the, in all these three, all of them provide value to each other. And by giving fair access to everybody, we think we can make the, uh, the overall access to that much more efficient and, uh, and effective for not only the project, making sure that they have sufficient funding, but also a huge community and make sure that the community can get access to these interesting uh, new uh, ideas and projects that are being developed and then not just end up in the um, in the hands of VCs, but also to make sure that VCs actually get full access to a broad range of, uh, of different projects and making sure that uh, that fundraising also happens on uh, proper terms that are uh, aligned with the, uh, with, with the overall uh, market, uh, market dynamics. So decentralization, transparency and, uh, and, uh, and trustlessness is, is really key to, to Polymec and being able to bring that to the, to the fundraising market is something that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very proud of. Yeah, thank you, sir, a lot. Yeah, I think those words are really make Polymec, like very unique and like uh, so strong and remarkable to the community and to all users. And we, we understand that there's still a lot of difficulties and problems that probably make the head face, but we think that those are very good motivation for Polymake 
to keep growing, to keep developing, and devoting to the ecosystem development, and especially to the users' benefits. And all of them we really expect from Polymake. And yeah, so wish you good luck, best luck in the next journey. Yeah. So um, I think it's all about the questions today. We've been through a lot um, about Polymake and also what uh, are they doing to the fundraising process. What is the unique points about Polymake, and also a lot of interesting upcoming events that Polymake promises. Yeah. So that's all. And so, sir, before we say goodbye, do you have any words left for our listeners today? Well, I think uh, most of all, I think it's it's uh, I'm really uh, really happy to see the uh, the strong community behind uh, behind Polymic, and that uh, that there is more than just uh, just the team at Polymic thinking that this is something that can really change the uh, the fundraising uh, landscape on. Uh, for, for blockchain, so uh, so really really good to see that the that the community is growing and that uh, that we can be uh, be strong together, building up uh, uh, Polymac as being a, a, a central factor in doing fundraising on Polyme- on uh, on blockchain going forward, um, and that uh, that we all can be a part of uh, of, of really changing the, the blockchain landscape and how to uh, end up in a. A, with a with a blockchain landscape and uh, that is both decentralized and transparent and uh, and definitely also uh, with access to to everybody. Yeah, thank you, sir, a lot, and also thank you, Polymake, for um, give us a chance to be a bridge to the community today in the AMA. And also thank all the listeners who have joined us today. We hope you really like it, and also. Um, Every important point about this AMA will be wrap up in the recap, and we're going to post it very soon in our Twitter page. So wait for it. Yeah, and I think that's all. And we can all see that Polymic has every potential for us to attach our next journey on. And we we believe that um, you guys can have a lot of surprises and good news from Polymic in the upcoming time. So don't forget to follow. Probably make Twitter page and to have the latest news and also a pocket insider for our next AMA Asset Team series. So goodbye everyone and have a nice day.